what we have here, and then we go through some examples of how to determine um, vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes um, given some different terms. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to find some vertical asymptotes and we're going to find some horizontal asymptotes. Now, to find the vertical asymptotes, um, one of the key things that we're looking for is vertical asymptotes are when essentially a function does not exist. So, f of x does not exist. Correct? So, uh, when does a function not exist? Well, generally a function doesn't exist when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so when the denominator equals zero, that's what we're looking for to figure out where um, we have a vertical asymptote. So once again, this is a vertical asymptote. Um, so I want to look at example number one here, and we're going to figure out when the denominator is equal to zero. Now, when we do that, we also have to determine um, do we have a whole or do we not have a whole? Okay, removal or just non-removable discontinuity. All right, so once again, vertical asymptotes are non-removable. So when the denominator equals zero, we cannot have, all right, um, we have to have a number over zero. That's what we're looking for, not in determinative form, but the zero over zero. Okay, so as we recall, all right, removable at the whole, you see in a graph. Um, removable is where we have indeterminate form, zero over zero, um, normally. Okay, so in this problem, for being example number one, we can see that we have one and over x plus two. Well, once again, where do we have a vertical asymptote? It appears what we do with the denominator, all right? Um, when x equals negative two, that appears what we have is a vertical asymptote. If you plug that in there, we have a number over zero. So f of negative two is one over zero, which definitely fills all the criteria. And so we have a vertical asymptote. Now, to help us determine and to verify this vertical asymptote, we're just gonna figure out, um, we're gonna take the limit. We're going to take the limit of negative 2 now, and we're going to approach it from both sides. We're going to take f of x, all right? And so um, right here, we get this function, example number 1, all right? And we're going to take both sides, and we're going to determine what is happening as we approach negative 2 from the right and left side. Now, to do this, we can do this with, with the calculator or without. I'm going to do it without the calculator. And to do that, what I do is, since I already know this is a very class, so I'm just trying to figure out, is it going to positive or is it going to negative infinity? So I'm going to pull the right and left side of negative two. To do that, I'm just going to plug in a value just to the right of negative two into this function. So I'm, this is going to be using a test point. I'm going to test the limit side. So I'm going to figure out what is happening when I plug in something to the right of negative two, so that would be like negative 1.9, okay? Negative 1.9 to plug it in there. Well, I'm not really essentially looking for is it going to be the actual value. I'm looking for what is going to be positive infinity. Because essentially, with the first class, so it's going to go either to really large, positive infinity, so the numbers are going to increase or decrease when we get closer to the two, um, to the asymptote. So when we plug in negative 1.9, plug it in there, we have 1 over negative 1.9 plus 2. Well, we realize that it's going to be a positive over a positive number, so we have is positive or positive, which means then that as we get closer and closer, we actually are approaching from the right of the two, we're going to positive infinity. All right, we're going to positive infinity. Right there, and positive infinity. What we can do on the other side is we can do the same thing. Once again, take a test point. All right, and we're going to plug in another value. So let's say it's from the left of negative 2, so negative 2.1. I'm going to plug that into my function. So what we have, we're going to have a positive with on top. When we plug in negative 2.1, we're definitely having a negative. So what's happening is we have a positive and negative, negative, which makes it negative infinity. So right here, we are approaching negative infinity, right, um, to the left side of negative 2. That's what we got. And that's how we can figure out this with the calculator. We can then now go and check out the horizontal asymptotes. Now, for a little review of horizontal asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, you have to compare the growth. At least with that's what I do, because we'll show that. Compare the growth of the numerator versus the denominator. If the growth in the numerator is greater than the growth in the denominator, what happens is our limit diverges, it goes to positive or negative infinity. When the numerator grows, um, the numerator's growth is less than the denominator's growth, that means the denominator's growth 
excessively larger. So that means it's approaching zero because you get a smaller sum of fractions. When they happen to grow at the same rate, all right, we know it's going to equal the leading coefficient. All right. Now, one thing to always make sure is when you're doing this is that horizontal asymptotes are the same thing as when you take the limit as x goes to infinity and again to infinity. So when we're doing this, all right, essentially to find my horizontal asymptote, I'm going to find, all right, this right here. Actually, I'm going to squeeze this and just do this one. All right, we'll do that one. Later. But I'm going to find the horizontal asymptote by taking the limit as x goes to infinity, and then we're going to take the limit as x goes to negative infinity, all right, for this function right there. So as we do this, um, we're going to infinity. Well, you look at the numerator denominator degree. Well, the numerator is definitely less than the denominator degree. So as x gets larger, this gets the denominator gets much larger. So what we're doing is we're approaching zero. The same thing can hold true when you put in a negative. It, the denominator gets bigger. So it's once again approaching zero. So since both of these we'd say our horizontal asymptote is the same from both right and left, our horizontal asymptote is going to be zero. Just to kind of verify this, you can graph this function. You can take out your graphing calculators, you can check this out. You take one and then divide it by quantity x plus two. Excuse me. All right, you can graph this. Oh, you probably should go to zoom six. A little graph here. And there you have it. You can see that of everything that we kind of knew, knew. All right, right here, as we approach negative two, and that's where we have our vertical asymptote on the right, going to positive infinity, from the left, going to negative infinity. You can see the end behaviors as we go to, as x approaches infinity, it is approaching zero. As x goes to negative infinity, you can see that x is going to zero as well. And so we verified graphically everything we found analytically. All right. So what I just did was I reviewed how to find um, vertical asymptotes, how to test to make sure that we um, try to determine if there is what infinity you're going to for the vertical asymptote, and also how to determine the horizontal asymptote. Hope this helps you with future problems. Um, we might make another tutorial on this um, in the future, but hopefully this was interesting. All right. Good luck. Have one.